<laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Parker Miley. And I'm Tim Benjamin. And this is the Rage Podcast, where today we are off site. We are on location we, today. Yes. We are on location <laughs> here at uh, Walnut Grove United Methodist Church. In Isn't it nice? Look at yeah, it. Look, I mean, it's a nice place. Yeah, it's a real nice over place. Here so you can see it. Yeah. I mean, right. real fancy. But for those of you who, you know, when was the last time we talked about me? Um, gosh, probably a couple months ago mm -hmm. we talked about how i was entering into uh, the lay local ministry licensing mm -hmm. school and and just all that kind of stuff that was coming around with it and i've been continuing on with that process and we actually haven't given an update oh maybe we should start with that now, yeah so i am as of uh, currently yeah. the the uh, acting pastor here at walnut grove umc in old st mary's ohio and i'm so fresh couldn't tell you the address. Couldn't tell you the. <laughs> yeah, we're here, but we don't know how we got I here. I don't know so, yeah. where I'm really at. But um, I know I'm in the sanctuary here, yeah. and it's very beautiful. A beautiful sanctuary, yeah. absolutely beautiful sanctuary. And um, so yes, I was appointed here, and uh, I I look forward to seeing all the awesome things that I can use my experience that I've developed at Wayne Street and alongside Pastor Tim, and come out here and. Wow, the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I have no doubt that he will. So we're excited to be out here today. We wanted to film from this location because we hope uh, folks from Walnut Grove will also uh, join us here on the Rage Podcast mm -hmm. along with a handful of you from uh, Wayne Street. And uh, to show a little partnership, we decided eh, we'll film, yeah. film on location. So so that's where we are today. And I'm going to tell Parker, stay in the shot here, Parker. Stay in the shot. Stay in the shot. Stay in the shot. <laughs> it's different. We're not in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah we're not in our, our normal place. Yeah, what I would call the studio. <laughs> <laughs> also known as the lounge. Yeah, the but, lounge uh, on Wayne Street. Yeah, but uh, yeah. And uh, we're, we're, we're glad to be here. And uh, they're outside right now uh, working on a piece of the foundation that looks like it's about done. So It's work. I mean, that... There's a project going on. Yeah, here on the and I was here a week ago, and is, none of it had even started. So it looks like they're doing zooming great work. through. So yeah, that so. is definitely good news. But today we have, as the rage normally goes, probably several topics to hit. <laughs> yeah. But Tim, you mentioned about um, today. We actually just got done doing some pastoral duties. That's right. We, we, were, we were on the radio we, this morning and now we're back here on the internet. Yes. We were up at WTGN radio to uh, do prayer with the pastor and Parker and I uh, covered that this morning. So any of you who may have been a part of that uh, was great. And the devotion we talked about was uh, motivation. And I think uh, that's kind of where we wanted to go today. Motivation is a very important thing. And the story we were looking at was uh, the story of Cain and Abel. Now, for those of you who may be familiar with the story of Cain and Abel, you know that's Adam and Eve's sons. And uh, Cain and Abel is a very interesting story, and it's always been kind of a haunting story to me because, you know, you know Cain brings uh, uh, the animal sacrifice and Abel brings the, the vegetables. And God says, well, I'm going to accept Abel's and not Cain's. And Cain, as you can imagine, doesn't take that news very well and uh, ends up uh, killing his brother because he's so angry. And, and, and what always has haunted me about that, and if you go back and read it, you'll find out no explanation for that's ever given. Now, we can speculate as to why God didn't accept Cain's, but accepted Abel's. But the Bible makes no attempt to explain what was going on there. So you're kind of, it's kind of left open to interpretation. And, uh, and that's kind of what we want to talk about today is, so why was that? Was there something wrong with, with, with Cain's offering? Is God like vegetables better? I mean, I mean yeah. what, what, what is the deal? And uh, I, think, I, I think what we came down to was it comes down to motivation. Uh, because if, if you go back and read the story, you'll find out that Cain apparently picked up pretty quickly that God was like, yeah, thanks, but no thanks to his offering. And he immediately gets angry at Abel. Hmm. Not angry at God. He's mad at Abel, obviously, because he ends up killing Abel, if, if you know how the story goes. And uh, I would say that what God was calling into question was Cain's motivation. Okay, Cain, you're bringing me this great sacrifice and whatever. It's great. But in your eyes, you're only saying, well, it's just better than that guy's. And that, that's all I care about. Yeah. It's not my best. It's not my, my, my prime stuff. It's not my most important thing. It's not valuable to me. It's not a sacrifice. It's just better than Abel's. And God basically said, I don't really care about that. I, I, I want your best. So Cain was bringing something better than Abel. And, and God said, Cain, you're better than that. And uh, I want something better for you than that. And, you know, <laughs> spoiler alert, God was right. Because once uh, he saw that Abel's uh, offering was accepted and, and his own was rejected, he immediately, and I mean right now, was mad at his brother. It's not like Abel said, you know, you could bring like 10 sheeps instead of seven, 
or you could bring a bull instead of a ram or it, you know it's not like abel tricked him abel if you go back and read the story never says a word doesn't even speak so it's not like anything that happened was abel's fault even if god was arbitrary and flipped the coin and said oh jesus tails cain i'm sorry even that way that's still not abel's fault so the fact that cain's rage turned immediately to abel means cain's motivation was not where it belonged and uh, that that leads us now to speculate and to, to say that that sometimes we need to watch our motivations and when so what was happening was take what was taking place was a form of worship right yeah <laughs> i gotta keep parker in the show what was taking place was like a form of worship right yeah. they were they were giving a of a sacrifice so obviously someone's heart wasn't in the right right place right, right? We, we can assume through how the story goes right cain well actually well, it's a catch-22 okay. okay because one brother, okay, brought a sacrifice, and it was good, right? Mm -hmm. We got approved. The other one brought a sacrifice, wasn't very, heart, we'll say, all right, heart wasn't in the right, right place, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly, in that situation. However, it also continues to grow in the fact that his heart was in such not the appropriate place. Yeah, if something happens to, that, that results in you murdering somebody, I yeah. think we can safely say your heart was not your, in the right Your heart place. was clearly not no. in the right place no. during worship, and because of that, I, you get the result of being frustrated with the wrong person. Yes. You then are taking out all your pain on Abel rather than yourself. Who, again, had nothing to do with what happened. He just happened to be the one that was there. Yeah. That, that's all Abel did. It's such a bizarre story mm -hmm. when you really think about it because, you know, where you also have to picture, there's only five people that we know of in existence at this current time. Yeah. Sure, there could have been more. Yeah. But to our knowledge, a definite knowledge, there were roughly five people. Yeah. In yeah. It was Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and Seth. Seth. Yeah. So we have one of them who you know it was it was of the family, right? It was all one big family. Go and kill his brother. Yeah, so we basically lost 20% of the entire earth in this story. But think about, so obviously, you know, God and the family of Cain and Abel were in pretty good relations, okay? Because uh, Adam and Eve were in the garden at one time, and in that garden they had a complete um, unison relationship with God. It was, you know, as if he was physically in this room currently. You mm -hmm. could contact God and mm -hmm. all those things. So obviously they had a good foreknowledge of how God carries himself what he wants out of people especially after the fall we realize oh this god person's serious and then we go from what we still classify as today as probably one of the most horrendous sins mm -hmm. murder murder yeah it's pretty bad and we get that checked off the list right away mm -hmm. it's just the story is very odd yeah only and because it's just yeah, it's, when you it's, think about it all, it's yeah, it's it's very it's very different, and I th I think the concern that that the people had was at, le at least the the lesson they were trying to get through was uh, Abel or Cain was looking for a result, and the result he wanted was God to say, Cain, you demand, Abel, not so much. Mm -hmm. I mean that, that that's the result that, that that Cain wanted, where the result that God, or what God wanted was for Cain to say, here is my here is my best. Here's what I have to offer, and it's the best I've got. That that was what God wanted was the motivation. Cain wanted the result. Oh, okay. Go mm -hmm. to the book of Acts, chapter 5. You'll see a story of um, two two people, all right? It was, they were a married couple. Mm -hmm. And this was when everyone was offering things up to God. So they came through. The Holy Spirit came through, obviously. It's the beginning of, of the church, right? So the first five chapters of, um, of Acts. And so you know, they're the preaching to 5,000 people. Everyone's heart's on fire for the mm -hmm. Lord. And, and there was this, this couple. And um, they sold their house. They sold their house and they were going to um, do what everyone else was doing at the time and give their offering to um, the apostles to do the work and mission that God has called all of us to do. But, you know, just like how you give money to a church, we, back then you gave your money to the apostles and mm -hmm. you kind of distribute same, it from Same there. difference, yeah. Same difference, right? But um, they did not give all of the off of the money that they got from their house they kept some back out of maybe fear or what, whatever their intentions were they kept some money back and they go before um peter and paul and they say uh-uh you your offering's done in, in the wrong yeah your heart's not yeah. in the right place because you're saying it's the offer. whole thing and we know it's not yeah. yeah you're saying this is the best i can give you when 
you, we know you have a set amount of money still hiding back from where you, mm-hmm. when you sell your house. And what happened was actually both, both the wife and the husband were in such fear from when they were caught, they fell to the floor and died. died. They collapsed. On the spot, yep. On the spot. Mm-hmm. And the, the, as the scripture says, it says they died at the feet of Peter and Paul. Mm-hmm. And, and that is... Kind now, of, now, let me make clear. One, one thing that Peter says to them before this happens, he says, look, you're in no obligation here. Mm-hmm. The problem here is that you're, you're, you're telling us something that's not true. Your, your motivation in giving this is not to build the church, it's to build yourself. And uh, so it was the motivation that was the problem. So, so again, it's, it's the same story all yeah. over. I never drew this parallel, but you're absolutely right. <clears throat> they were looking for a result where God was looking for a motivation. And since the motivation was in the wrong place, it doesn't matter what the result was. When it started say, for the wrong place. When we say motivation, and this this can't, comes into effect today because it's a matter of where our heart is during worship. What is our motivation when mm-hmm. we attend church? What yeah, when we come motivation? into a place like this, yeah. why, why are we here? What are what we looking for? When, when we toss, say, whatever our offering amount is into the offering plate, are we doing it because our neighbors beside us are doing it and we want to look normal? Or are we doing it because our offering is going to go to do good? Yeah, God's work. Are we, you know, and, you know, it's in a goes around everything like that are we are we doing this in order to seek attention or are we doing this in order to serve the god that has commanded uh, us to do these things yes and and one of the things you got to watch out for is is god is looking for motivation he's not so concerned with results Mm -hmm. and and at the end of the day results belong to god anyways whatever's going to happen is going to happen he's just looking for faithfulness on our behalf faithfulness I mean, it can be a result of things but normally faithfulness is the motivation of things or, or can be or should be and, uh, and so that's why that motivation is so important. Uh, the result is, is less important to God than the motivation behind why it happened. And, and I think that's what both the Cain and Abel story and, and uh, the two people from Acts. What are the, do, you, do you remember their names? Uh, Ananias and Sapphira. Is Ananias, what I was thinking. yes, that is, that is it. That I was is thinking Ananias that. Ananias and Sapphira, yeah. yeah. So, yes. Don't mess with us on Bible trivia. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so when we walk into a place like this, when you walk through, you come into this place to worship, right? This is the sanctuary. It is, is where we worship here on Sundays. And a beautiful place it is. And a beautiful place it is. So what we see is there are several people who gave their time and effort to mm-hmm. design this place. And build to, it. To build it. Well, you've got, you got a couple guys outside here right now laying a new foundation to, under, under the side of the wall To make it here. look enjoyable and pleasing. I mean, look mm-hmm. at this. I mean, this, yeah, is, look at this, this is a very aesthetically Absol- pleasing absolutely gorgeous. walking in the presence of God mm-hmm. when you come in here. And so if you're going to walk into a place that requires you to show reverence, respect to God, and you're not fully there... When you come into a place that is designed for you to worship and you're not worshiping, all of the motivation and intent, your intentions is what's wrong. Mm-hmm. What, what you are wanting out of it is, is some falsehood. It's like saying, I'm going to win the lottery and with it I'm going to buy fairies. That doesn't work, right? Because <laughs> yeah. fairies don't exist, yeah. right? So, well, sp- spoiler so, alert. Come on, yeah, Parker. Yeah. Well, you yeah. never know in the world. You never know. That's right. Somebody but, may identify but, as a fairy. But honestly... When you have your expectations become a reality, if you're not worshiping God, then why does God have any, why is God going to accept your sacrifice of worship? It just goes right back to the Cain and Abel story. Yep. Yep. It's what, 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 the, the, the question of why is this happening becomes extremely significant. And a lot of times, and again, and, and I don't know that's necessarily always bad. Yes, we should worry about results. Yes, we want good things to happen. I mean, no doubt. But at the end of the day, we have less control over those than we do over our own motivations. So I think the challenge that we have coming out of this today is, why do you do what you do? And why do you not do what you don't do? Is that right? I think that's right. But yeah, what's your motivation to either do or not do things? And and I think that if, if, if we could guard those motivations and give faith to God to say, okay, I'm going to offer you this. What are you going to do with it? It, it stops being... Cain murders Abel and starts being loaves and fishes, mm-hmm. where, where now the result is, okay, Jesus, here's what we have. It's just a little bit, but we're going to be faithful with it. And Jesus is like, well, see all these people about to eat? And, and I, I, th- I think that's what it is. I mean, the loaves and fishes story is clearly a story about God is in control of results, and God will make whatever results he wants. But what, what is important is the motivation. Where does that start from? And Cain and Abel and Ananias and Sapphira have certainly screwed that one up. But the apostles uh, out there at the feeding of the 5,000 got it right, and, and the results were 
miraculous. Uh, and, and so I, I think a lot of times we get so hung up on what I want to happen that we lose sight of why we're doing it in the first place. And, and, and suddenly things we do because we've always done it that way or we don't do it because we've never done it that way. And uh, I, those motivations are honestly very unfulfilling. So, You've got to be genuine. Yeah, I think that's, there's, I think, that's right. There's no genuineness. There's no genuineness when you're, when you're doing something out of our immediately seeking reward. I think this goes very well with the sermon me and, and Don yeah. kind of mm-hmm. work together with. We talked about how, you know, God offers not all the time immediate pleasure and reward, right? We know mm-hmm. that this life of Christianity comes with some heartache and mm-hmm. we're not always seeing the, the streets of gold here on earth. But um, we exchange some heartache and some pain every once in a while that comes from living a life that is hated by the world, riddled with sin, is what I said in the sermon, and um, in exchange for eternal glory. Right, a life spent in paradise. Yep. After all this, and then the only thing that Satan can offer you is immediate reward and pleasure in exchange that, for eternity. That's fake. Let's yeah, add that. That's fake. Here. But yeah, in, in exchange for eternity and pain. So when you're when you're trying to be genuine, everyone knows what offer you want. Everyone yeah, result knows, yeah, knows what knows, result you knows want. what results yeah. you want. Mm-hmm. But depending upon what motivation, how you respond to that, it depends upon where I guess you end up in this in this yeah. analogy. Yeah. But. Yeah, whether you're Ananias and Sapphira or your people eating at the feeding of the 5,000, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of those, and obviously we all know which one we want. So quit, I mean, I'm, I'm, to, on all honesty, quit trying to be something you're not. Quit trying to get something you know you're not going to receive. We've, we've lived life on earth with Jesus now for roughly 2,000 years, okay? After, after Jesus, now obviously the Holy Spirit's here on earth. But we've experienced a lot of things and if you still walk into worship with a heart that's not worshiping God, when you still walk into an offer or a deal with God and you're expecting something immediate in reward for your own benefit, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, that motivation is not good. Yep. It's because what you're giving, what you're offering is not supposed to go back into your pocket in some mm-hmm. time. What you're doing is offering it to be used to help someone else. You're investing it. You're yeah. investing it. Yeah, and, and I, I think that, that's where Cain and Abel and Ananias and Spire, I think that's where they messed up. Is uh, their motivation was I want some I want some kind of a, of appreciation I guess back from this that God was like well that's, that's not going to happen and then the whole offering fell apart yep. and uh, so that that's our challenge you guys this week is why do you do what you do and uh, why do you avoid doing what you don't do and uh, what is your motivation behind that because if our motivation is truly we want to honor God or see what God has to do then we're going to give it and say even if you want to throw this out or reject it like you did Cain's offering. That's okay. Uh, my motivation in giving it is to do with what you will, and if this is something you, you know you decide to reject, that's that's what we're doing. Uh, because not every good deed that you do in life is going to have an immediate return. In fact, some of the return you may never even be aware of. Uh, but that doesn't relieve you of your obligation and responsibility to go do those things. So, be genuine with your intentions. Yep. Yep. Watch out for those motivations because they'll determine blessing or curse, really. So anyways, well, thanks for joining us out here from uh, Walnut Grove United Methodist yes. Church. Uh, we'll be filming a few more of these out here uh, through, through, the, through the weeks seasons and months to come, and seasons whatever. to come. Yeah, yeah we're probably going to pick a cooler day to be out here next time. Yeah. yeah, hopefully next time yeah. we're out here in fall has yeah. arrived. Yeah, but uh, thanks for joining us today. And uh, as always, uh, we want you to have a great week. Uh, continue to go out there and build the kingdom. And thanks for joining us here for the Rage Podcast.